بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Um, just all the brothers outside, if you can just keep it down, or please just close that um, screen door if you don't mind, please. So before we get into the topic, um, I've got a few things to say, subhanAllah. Uh, we'll just wait everyone comes in a bit. You know, dealing with the um, Muslim community, wallahi, to be honest, the last two months I've been uh, straight after Ramadan, I've gone through depression. Not through things I'm going through personally myself, but due to the problems of the Ummah. You know, being within the community for the last 18, 19 years, I've seen a lot. I'm telling you, it's getting worse. By Allah, it's getting worse. And I don't know, you know can we go any further than what we are at the moment? Because we're looking like Muslims now. If you look at the general population, you look at the youth, you look at the sisters, the brothers, you know, they're wearing the jilbabs, all this niqabs, brothers have got beards on, wearing the thobs and all these sort of things. But we have major issues within. And this is the whole point of talking about whispers of the shaitan. We're looking the part, we look like Muslims, yeah? We're acting like Muslims, but within we have major problems. This Facebook issue is a major, 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 major problem for every brother, every um, sister in, in this ummah. You know, we're trying to fool ourselves. I don't know if any of you are on my page, but a few weeks ago I mentioned uh, how many people actually take their knowledge from Facebook. And many people are taking their knowledge from Facebook. You're taking a hadith, you're taking a quote, you're taking something, you know, um, a verse of the Quran and you're learning this. You cannot attain knowledge through Facebook. Understand this. Myself, I deactivated last week. I don't know if many of you have noticed. Because you know, you're looking at it, look at the people who like my posts. And I have to be honest. You've got a thousand girls with no hijab. A thousand girls that aren't dressed properly. Brothers with no shirts on, their, their, their chest is hanging out, their six packs hanging out, you know. Even though oh, I've got a keg myself. So, you know, but what's happening? You're liking Islamic posts, but what's going on? And I fear that brothers and sisters are communicating on my page by liking. Because everyone checks out who's liking what. Even to the point, subhanAllah, and I've done some investigation. This way, I, I, I had enough. I started looking into individuals that are on my page. And I started looking at what they like. You know, they like this page, that page. You find sisters with niqab. Having brothers with no shirts on, you know, they like this fitness thing and it's all of six packs and all this sort of stuff. How can our sisters do such a thing? But then again, you have the brothers. You know, they're liking all these Islamic pages, but you have you know, half-naked girls. You know, uh, like pages that they like as well. It's a contradiction. What's going on? We don't understand. We're following Islam. We're not following the, the, the shaitan. But unfortunately, at the moment, we're following Allah and we're following shaitan at the same time. By deceiving ourselves. Phone call after phone call after phone call. Destruction of marriages. Abu Hamza came, Sheikh Abu Hamza, a couple of weeks ago, and he spoke about the issue. My phone has not stopped this week about problems about, um, what do you call it, about uh, divorce cases and all these sort of things. Over what? No one's happy in their life. You know, if you're stuck to your phone 24-7, by Allah, how many people have got Facebook here? Hands up. Be honest. Hands up, up. I want to see. Generally, the first thing you do before you sleep is check what? Your news feed. Yes or no? Be honest. You go to bed, you're checking out what's going on. You finish everything, you put your phone down. First thing you wake up in the morning, what do you do? People are laughing. What's the first thing you look at? You don't look at your wife. Oh, mashallah, sister. My dear, uh, darling wife, I love you. You're checking out what's going on Facebook. Can you see the issue? You're at work. What are you doing? Working half-hearted. Why? Because you have to see what's going on. You have to see what's going on in Facebook. Issue after issue after issue. Then all of a sudden... You might have some girl that's, you know, communicating. You know, you put up a post, a girl um, talks. And to be honest with you, uh, 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 two weeks ago, I was shocked by brothers who have bids. Yes? Some of them are even in the community. They help, help out other organizations and all these sort of things. The things they were saying online, I could not believe. By Allah, I had to message one of them because I had one of their numbers. And I said to them, what are you doing? I'm too embarrassed to even say the words that they said. How can you be part of the community and you're wrecking yourself, you're wrecking the ummah? And then you have sisters giggling. Hee, 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 hee. They're saying words, wallahi, wallahi, I'm too embarrassed to even mention. Then they're putting up photos, or sorry, videos, brothers with beards ringing up, all, you know, radio stations lying to them and all these sort of things, and then swearing and all these things. What's going on? 
And we're just sitting here going, hee hee, lol, L-O-L. The ummah of lol, yeah? That's the most famous word, I think, in this earth, in this time, lol. Are we Muslims? We say, yes, alhamdulillah. Why don't we act like Muslims? Why don't we leave the shaitan aside? Why don't we move forward? Now to the point of whispering of the shaitan, subhanallah. This is one of the ways that shaitan deceives the ummah. He doesn't just come to you, Ahmed, ukfur. Ahmed, disbelieve in Allah straight away. He said, no. Slowly, slowly, he starts putting things into your heart and into your minds. Nice and easy. He's got a long-term plan. Us Muslims, unfortunately, we think for five minutes ahead. He's got plenty of time. He, was, he existed before Adam and he's going to live until the end of time. Yes, in this dunya. He's got plenty of time. If Ahmed lives to 60, okay, he's now, how old are you, Ahmed? 15, inshallah. In a couple of years we'll get him married. Yeah. <laughs> he's got plenty of time. So he's starting to come to the masjid, he's starting to become a better person. How am I going to play with Ahmed now? Huh? Facebook? Okay. Slowly, slowly. Deceive him. Get some girl to like him or get his mind into some other girl, subhanAllah. Slowly, slowly, eventually, he'll get to him. Because this is the way the shaitan works. Nice and easy, subhanAllah. And in Arabic, it's waswas. Uh, waswas. You know, basically, it is an evil thought that he puts into your mind. It might come for one second, one second the first time. He might just put something in your mind. If you pay attention and give it thought, that's where he's got you. And then slowly, slowly, he'll keep, uh, keep putting these things into your mind, subhanAllah. Tayyib, don't think he's just trying to deceive you about your religion. He wants to devastate your whole life. Shaitan is going where? Hell. Everyone agree? Does everyone think he's going to heaven? He's going to hell. So he wants to take everyone out. Please don't tell him about cars. APS 35S White Terata Avensis. Can you please move it? You're blocking the sister's car. Is that other ones? White Toyota, uh, number plate silver? Silver looks white on that. Uh, BG59MH. Zakumullah Khair. Tayyip, he wants to wreck your religion, yes? He wants to put doubt in your heart about your religion. This is one thing, you know, when we lose our iman, our iman goes up and down. Who knows why? When does our iman go up? Through good deeds. By being a good Muslim. By obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your iman rises. How does it go down? By sinning. Agreed? This is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. We understand this. Yes? So what he does, he wants to put doubt in your heart about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to put doubt in your heart about your acts of worship and he wants you to sin. But not only that, he wants you to have hatred towards the believers. He makes problems between husband and wife. He makes problems between uh, people of the family. Your close friends, he puts these issues between you, subhanAllah. He wants to devastate you totally. Why? And if you look at other things before that, we look at how many Muslims or how many people have become depressed over what? Over what? They don't even know why they're living. You have that comedian, yes, who died not long ago. I don't even want to mention his name. He died over what? He was depressed. He had nothing to live for. Even though he was what? A multi. Yeah. Was he cashed up? Did he have money? 100%. Could he do what he wanted? Could he go wherever he wanted? Could he buy whatever car he wanted? 100%. Which proves something to us all. It proves that even if you have money and you can do whatever you want, Wallahi, if you don't have Iman, you got nothing. You have got nothing at all. You might have, brothers might have the most beautiful, gorgeous wife, drop dead, you know, you see her, your heart faints, you're on the floor, yes, I married her, alhamdulillah, ya Rabb, yes. But if Allah doesn't put iman in your heart, you have nothing. Because she might be the test, yes, to your destruction. Also, he makes you depressed, he makes you feel down. Not everyone's at the same level. You know, having that teenage class on Saturday has taught me a lot, subhanAllah. You start to see at a very young age where people have issues. Some have personal issues because of their weight. Some are shy. Some are to themselves. You learn so much, subhanAllah. And this is how shaitan deceives them from, um, from such an early age, subhanAllah. So us Muslims, we have to feel good about ourselves. We have to lift ourselves. We have to be good Muslims. We have to be good role models. And we need good role models. 
My dear older brothers, my dear older brothers, please, have to pay attention. You know when we see our youth? Don't shun them. Don't always look down at them. Befriend them. Because what did the Prophet Sallallahu do? Did he shun the youth? Or did he uh, advise them? Did he love them? Wallahi, he loved them. And to be honest, one of my favorite classes of the week is my teenage class. They muck around, they say a few things, cheeky things from here and there, but let it go, who cares? Because one day they're going to grow up and they're going to remember every single thing that, that you, you taught them. And how many mistakes do they have in their wudu? How many mistakes do they have in their salat? Because their parents are not teaching them. Where are your parents? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. You start by yourself, you look after yourself. Then whom? Whom? Joe Blow outside? Or your family? Your family, you have to look after them. So you need to establish this in their hearts, subhanAllah. Taib, is this whispering real? Does anyone believe that we have waswas? Does anyone think it's all baloney? It's all rubbish? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Surah An-Nas. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in translated meaning Say, I seek refuge with whom? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds The King of mankind, the Ilah, the God of mankind From what? What are you seeking refuge from? From the evil whispers of the one who deceives Shaitan The one who whispers into the heart of men, subhanallah you're seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these whispers. Does anyone not have any whispers? Every single one of us has. All of us have something in our minds. It's not from us. Girl walks past. Whoop, don't look. But look. Don't look. 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 You go crazy. Look, don't look. What am I going to do? You have to seek refuge with whom? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this happens, you have to seek refuge with Allah. Because you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save yourself subhanallah. Tayyib, let's look at the companions. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu some companions came to the Prophet sallallahu They said, Ya Rasulullah, we have these things in our minds and our hearts, and he whispers, that we're too scared to even mention. They're having thoughts of kufr. They're too scared even to mention this. And the Prophet sallallahu said to them, is this true? Does this really happen? They said, yes. And he said to them, this is Iman. What does he mean here? This is Iman. They're having evil thoughts, yes, but they're too scared to mention it. They're trying to fight this. So this shows their true faith. Meaning when we get a thought in our minds, check out the chicks that are walking past boys, we fight that thought, yes. We're fighting it, we're not going with that th uh, thought as the companions did. Steal something. No, I'm not going to steal. I have to fight that thought. Do something haram. No, I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does it make sense? All these thoughts, ya, uh, ya Ahlul Facebook, yeah? The people of Facebook. You get a thought? There's a girl that liked my thing. There's a brother who liked it. Check out his profile. You say no. And I beg you all, Wallah, I beg you. Anyone who's on Facebook, deactivate. You want to learn Islam? Don't forget we have books. These books that we have sitting on our shelves. There's many lectures that you can listen to. You want to learn? Facebook isn't the place to learn. You want to ask questions? Facebook isn't the place to ask. We put so much hope into this and they're making so much money out of us. And we're giving it and giving it and giving it. Get rid of it. Wallah, I ask you but Allah. Get rid of your Facebook now. Get off social media. We have gatherings. My brother here, Khalid al-Hajj. May Allah reward him. He cannot stand when we have gatherings and everyone's on their, on, on their phone. He starts yelling at us. What are you on your phone for? Get off it. We can't even communicate like humans anymore. We're sitting there, we'd rather communicate on WhatsApp, yes, rather than talk. Honestly. We sit there for hours on our phones, but we cannot communicate no more. Why? It's killing us, subhanAllah. Taib, another companion came up to the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, Ya Rasulullah. They sh uh, shaitan comes between me and my prayer and I get confused in my recitation. The Messenger وسلم, gave a name to this specific shaitan whose name is Khanzab. He comes and he confuses you. And he said, if you feel his, uh, his presence, then seek refuge with Allah. Say, Audhu Billah, Shaitan, Rajim. Look to your left, even in your prayer. You're in your prayer, you stop, 
A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem And you spit all You blow three times And the shaitan will flee from you And this, um, this companion said But Allah after this When I did it He never came back But it comes back up to your iman Do you believe in what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you? Yes? If you do, do it And you'll see the benefit of it Subhanallah So every one of us Especially in this When we start our prayer What happens to us? Our minds go Subhanallah Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said, when the prayer for call, when the call for prayer, sorry, the adhan is given, the shaitan, what does he do? He flees, he runs. Not only he runs, he blows wind. Yes, it sounds a bit funny. He's hearing the adhan, but he blows wind. Why? So he cannot hear the adhan. He doesn't want to listen to it. He runs, he flees. When the adhan is over, he comes back. When the ikama is made, he runs again. But when the ikama has finished, he comes back and then he starts to deceive. He starts putting thoughts into the person who is praying, things that he forgotten, subhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us the issue here. Why is this happening? The shaitan is specifically here to disturb our recitation and our prayers and our khushu. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us a medicine. He gave us a way out of this. And when this happens, and we're going to see this a lot now in this masjid, huh? everyone's going to be standing out of the shaitan. Everyone's going to be spitting. Yeah? But this is the way to get away from that, subhanAllah. Also, the Prophet sallallahu in another hadith by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he said that the shaitan comes to you and he says, who created such and such? Yes? Who created such and such? And this might have happened to many of you. Who created that? Naturally, who are you going to ask? Who are you going to say? Allah, true or not? Then he says, who created again such and such? You're going to say Allah. Until the point where shaitan comes to you and says, who created? Allah. This is where you start getting confused, especially when you come into Islam or you're, you're basically coming back into Islam. Who and what? And the Prophet ﷺ said, if this happens to you, seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stop thinking about it. Because no one created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the shaitan, when he's got you, he wants to put this thought into you. But he didn't start by saying who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the start, did he? No, slowly, slowly. Huh? Who created this? Who created that? Who created that? Your answer is Allah, Allah, Allah. And then the end, who created Allah? So seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and move that thought from your heart subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us about this shaitan. He's warned us to keep away from him and don't let him deceive you subhanAllah. Allah has mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ Yes, surely shaitan is an enemy, enemy towards you, so treat him as an enemy. If someone hates you, and you know they hate you, and they're trying to harm you, are you going to befriend them? Are you going to listen to them? Are you going to sit with them? No, Allah, you're going to treat them as an enemy. You're going to give them evil looks, you're going to pay, not even pay attention to them. So why are we paying attention to this shaitan, subhanAllah? Also, we need to know who shaitan is. Who is he? Does anyone know actually who shaitan is? Many of us, yeah, okay. You know, he was born, he was like this and that. But you have to know exactly what he's about. And also work out, why does he hate us, subhanAllah? Why has he got it in for the human being, subhanAllah? Tayyib number one, there's a confusion. And even the ulama have spoken about this. Is the shaitan a jinn or an angel? Answer. Anyone think he's an angel? Hands up. Anyway, the ulama has spoken a lot about this, but the proper answer is that he is one of the jinn. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in translated meaning, and remember when we said to the angels prostrate, and this is the point where everyone gets confused. So they prostrated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to bow down to whom? To Adam alayhi salam. They all bowed down except Iblis. Yes? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, except Iblis, he was one of whom? The jinns. He disobeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't misunderstand, even though he was amongst the jinn, uh, sorry, the, the, the angels, doesn't mean that he's one of them. And the ulama even went into the point of, for instance, if there's a person amongst a tribe, he's not part of the tribe. But then whenever a call is called out to them, they're going to call, uh, make him part of the tribe. Why? Because he's amongst them. So he used to pray with the angels. He used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the angels. The outer look looked the same, but the inner thing is different, and he's a different creation totally. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in that, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ He was one of the jinn and he disobeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we go back to the creation of the, uh, the, the angels. 
the angels do not disobey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ever. Which brings us the point to free will. The point of free will. Us humans, we have free will or not? We can do whatever we want. Now we have an issue. The jinn, do they have free will? Yes. They get to choose. Believe or disbelieve. The angels are created to do what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this makes the difference between Iblis and the angels. Okay, because all the angels bowed down to Adam alayhi salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them, but Iblis didn't. Back to the point of free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf in a uh, translated meaning, then, uh, then whosoever, let him believe, and whosoever wills, let him disbelieve. This is up to you. Ya Abdullah, a servant of Allah, this is up to you. You want to worship Allah, you worship Allah. But let's just put a bit of uh, flavor in this. If you're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to something, what are you doing? Logically would think committing zina would be worse than not praying. La wallahi. The worst thing that you could do is not pray. I'm sinning, continue your prayer. Why? Because your prayer will save you. Your prayer will save you one day and it'll wake you up one day. Because if you pray and you pray sincerely, you're going to wake up to yourself one day and think, what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? So these people have attributed themselves to the shaitan subhanAllah by not or rejecting the prayer subhanAllah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expelled Iblis from his mercy. He was rejected after that. And you find many passages in the Quran subhanAllah you know, about the communication between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iblis subhanAllah. In one verse in Surah Al-Hijr it's mentioned so the angels prostrated themselves all together except Iblis. He refused to be amongst those who prostrated. Allah said to Iblis, He said, Ya Iblis, what is your reason for not being one of those who prostrate? Why? He's asking him, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But He's teaching us a lesson here in this verse, subhanAllah. Why? Why didn't you put, uh, bow down to Adam? And Iblis said, I am not the one to prostrate myself to a human being. You created him from what? Mud, from clay, from tin, yes? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Then get get out from here verily you are a regime you are an outcast you're a reject now you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what it is what happens you lose yourself from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially our prayers these things that are obligatory on us everyone knows the five pillars of Islam I hope so if you don't know them learn them ASAP you reject anything from the five pillars of Islam you have a problem because if you reject it, you're out of Islam. If you reject any of the five pillars, subhanAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the curse shall be upon you until the day of resurrection. So because of this re uh, rejection, because of him disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected him totally. But Iblis didn't stop there. Now the issue. He wanted, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to bow down to Adam alayhi salam. He said no. He's got this hatred now towards Adam alayhi salam. And all the humans... Now I'm rejected, I'm hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Adam wants to take down the whole humanity. Because he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for respite. He asked him. He asked Allah for respite and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. He gave him that chance. But we have free will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, uh, given each individual intellect and understanding and signs and messengers and books fall into it one day. And never ever think in your life, that's not going to happen to you. And it's not going to happen to your family. You don't know Wallahi. Then Allah, uh, sorry, then Iblis, in another verse, and there's many verses in the Quran that mention about this discussion. Iblis says, by your might, by your might, he's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's lifting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your might. Then I'll surely mislead them. He's making an oath he is, reality is. Where are you living? Muslim or non-Muslim country? Non-Muslim country. You have that mentality, you're better off packing up and going. Give da'wah to the people. We're still allowed to preach. And I fear by some people who are too hot-headed, we're even going to lose that permission to um, go out to the streets and preach. And you know, if that happens, well, it's going to be a very sad day. It's going to be sad that we can't have our beads and our sisters can't wear niqabs. It's going to be sad. 
And slowly, slowly, what's happening in these countries? They're changing things. So wake up, wake up. Don't be a keyboard warrior. Yeah, I'm on the internet. Yeah, I can say whatever I want. Believe me, if the intelligence got you and gave you a few, uh, you know, a, f- a few slaps in the face, so how are you going to act? <gasps> Please, they put me in jail. Whatever you want. They took my passport. I can't go anywhere. Don't wreck yourselves. Don't wreck yourselves. Do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, fix yourself up. Pray better. Fast better. Do extra things. Fix up your community. How many Muslims here living in Auburn are on drugs? Do you know? In Bankstown, in Blacktown, all these different areas. How many Muslim drug dealers are there? And we want to sit there, we want to fight the kafar. We want to kill the disbelievers. Start with yourselves, man. Fix up yourselves. Wallahi, it's more important. Look after your kids. Look after your parents. Young hot-blooded people going against their parents. Yelling at them, screaming at them. This is Islam. This is Islam. You going out, fighting, and you're disobeying your parents. Doesn't make sense. Wallahi, it doesn't make sense. Um, was what? Mu'min or the, uh, was he a believer or disbeliever? A believer. But his lineage, his offspring, were of good and bad. Okay, so he was the father of all the jinn, subhanAllah. Tape. Some of the things that we need to remember is that we have to stick to something to protect ourselves. If you can stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, you know, sometimes we unfortunately follow ways within Islam, which is culture and not Islam. We have to keep this away from us, we have to keep ourselves away from this. You have to stick to the pure Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. In the narration, the Prophet uh, was, uh, he was with, with the companions and they said, Ya Rasulullah, give us a sermon by which, oh, sorry, the, the Prophet uh, was giving them a sermon by which their hearts were touched and their eyes were filled with tears. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, it is though this is a, fir- uh, um, uh, a farewell sermon. So counsel us, give us advice. It's like this is the last time you're going to be speaking to us. Teach us something. So the Prophet وسلم, he gave them a few words. He said, I'll count, I, counsel you, uh, I counsel you with to have uh, taqwa. You have to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Generally now, you know when you tell someone, fear Allah, what happens? You get the sugars, yeah? You get angry. You get upset. Ya why are you telling me to fear Allah? You fear Allah, huh? This is what happens. The Prophet ﷺ is telling the companions, who are the best people after Rasulullah? The companions. He's telling them, these, the God-fearing people, I counsel you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to listen and to obey your leader, even if he was a slave. Even if he was a slave. So number one, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and listen to your Amir. Verily he amongst you who lives a long time will see great corruption, controversy. In this time and day, it's like he's talking about us now. Yeah, we're seeing this with our own eyes. The fitna amongst the ummah. So he advised us. He said, "So you must keep to my sunnah. You must keep to my sunnah." And the sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin, who are whom? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. You need to stick to their way. Why? Because if you don't stick to their way, you're going to be on a different path. So anything that's not part of this deen, you shun it aside. You put it away. It might look good. I heard this Ramadan, subhanAllah, first time ever. That I think the Turkish people, they pray, I think it's a thousand or I don't know how many prayers in one night. There's one specific night of the year that they actually pray a thousand prayers or something like this. And people are asking, is this true, not true, all this sort of thing. It seems good. But on this one day, you've established... An innovation in Islam which is going to kill the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though they're praying. But this was not the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what do we do with it? We say, sorry, we're not going to do it unless we have a dalil. And evidence from the Quran or the sunnah. And this is how you're going to save yourself. By sticking to his sunnah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. You stick to it, you won't lose yourself. You start going here and there, you start getting misguided. You start going different ways, subhanAllah. And he said, cling to it, stubbornly. Bite on it with what? 
your mawla teeth, teeth here, when you hold on to something, you can't let go, you pull, you pull, you're still holding on to it. Cling on to that sunnah with your mawla teeth, subhanAllah. And he said, beware of newly invented matters, bid'ah innovation, for every innovation is misguidance. Every single one of them. Even if it seems good, it's not good. It's not good for any of us. As I said, every innovation that is made into Islam, you're losing the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tkhullu fi silmi kafa wa la tattabiyu khutwat al-shaytan. Enter in perfectly into Islam. Enter into this religion. If you claim that you're a Muslim, you have to take it as a whole. All of it. Every single part of Islam, you have to take it and accept it and live it. If you start shunning it and putting it aside, what happens? You're starting to follow another way and you're going to get misguided, subhanAllah. In Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions when the son of Adam recites a verse of sajda and then he bows down, prostrate, decent, fun, innocent fun. So what if I'm on Facebook and I talk to you know, Abdullah? Who cares? I don't have nothing in my heart. But how do you know nothing's in his heart? Huh? And then one day, all of a sudden, you fought out of love with your partner. Why? Because you're talking too much to Abdullah. Yes? So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, another way is you have to ignore these satanic things that come into your mind. These whispers that come into your mind. You have to ignore them. Put them out of your mind. Ya akhi, look. Now I'm not going to look. Do this. Now I'm not going to do this. What can he do? Akhi, get up. I'm forcing him. But when you get this uh, thought in your mind, what happens? It's only a thought. Who moves forward? We move forward. So you have to ignore these um, thoughts that come into your mind. And remember, shaitan has no power over you whatsoever, but whisper. He can only whisper. He can't force you to take a knife and stab someone. He can just put the thought, Ahmed, kill him. He swore at your mother. Quick, get up, stab him. Then you grab the knife and you stab him. He's not going to take the blame on the Day of Judgment. One of the scholars were asked about the remedy of fixing up these uh, evil whispers that he said, uh, they come into our mind. He said, uh, ignore them completely. No matter how frequently they come to your, your mind, just ignore them. Because when the whispers are ignored, they're going to eventually go away. But if you pay attention, you're going to end up like a madman. Wallahi, the sister came to me on Thursday. Wallahi, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give a shifa. She's going through a very hard time and from that second when she was trialed, Wallahi, the shaitan has not let her go. Whisper after whisper after whisper, you sit with her and you see her face change three, four different times within a few, uh, a few seconds. She's going through this, but she has to put this aside and just shun these thoughts aside. As I said, the shaitan, all he can do is whisper. That's it. You can take control of yourself. But by following the Quran and Surah, Sunnah, it becomes a lot easier for you, subhanAllah. And don't forget to make a lot of supplication. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Supplication, du'a, it is worship itself. Because in our prayer, what are we doing? Are we making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Supplicating is the root to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to communicate, Akhi, you need a hundred dollars. Generally, who do we turn to? Akhi, Khalid, hundred dollars please. He'll say, Allah Rasi, no problem. But I have to turn to whom first? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in a verse where he says, And your Lord said, Call upon me and I will answer you. Ad'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me. Don't call about Khalid. Allah reward Khalid even though we're going to ask, he's going to give. Yes? But first and foremost, you turn to Allah, you ask Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. He might put you through a little test. Yeah. The brothers who want second wives, Ya Allah, please. <laughs> ya Allah, I've been asking for two or three years and it's not happening. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows maybe there's harm in this. Yes. Maybe he knows that you might change. Maybe there might be a fitna for you. So Allah knows what's best for that. SubhanAllah. And also, I want to bring up an interesting point. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. That verily the plot of shaytan is weak. Weak. The thoughts that he's putting into your mind is nothing. So you can easily shun it. But you know what's interesting? In Surah Yusuf, <laughs> one of the brothers know what I'm going to talk about. 
In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions or talks about the plot of women. And he mentions and he said, surely it is a plot of you women and certainly mighty is your plot. So the plot of shaitan is what? Weak. But the plot of women is what? Strong. Subhanallah. So be careful my dear brothers. Huh? Be careful. Taib, what if these thoughts come to me? What if all these evil thoughts are coming and I'm fighting them? Some of the ulama said this is a jihad. You fighting these thoughts is a jihad. And you're going to get rewarded inshallah because you're fighting them. Remember the first hadith that we mentioned about the companions? They're having these evil thoughts. Prophet ﷺ said, this is iman. This is true faith. So when you fight these thoughts, they come, do this. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get rewarded inshallah. Taib, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, in a hadith Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Allah decreed good and bad deeds. Then he explained it. He said, whoever uh, thinks of doing a good deed, and then he um, does not do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him one hasana. You think of getting up and praying, you don't do it, you're still getting reward. But if you get, think of something good, and you do it, you get from 10 hasanat up to 700 or even more. Taib, what about the bad deeds? It's mentioned in the, the narration. And if he thinks of doing a bad deed, but doesn't do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you. You're thinking of evil, but you stop it, you're getting reward. Allahu Akbar. But if you think of evil and then you do it, it's written down as one bad deed. When you do a good deed, 10 to 700, depending on your intention, depending on your quality, depending what's in your heart. But when you do a bad deed, generally you're an evil, you have evil thoughts. You do it, you get one bad deed, subhanAllah. Taib, doesn't stop there. Another narration. The Prophet sallallahu he said, have taqwa, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever you may be, and follow up a bad deed with a good deed. What happens? It gets wiped away. The bad deed goes away. So it gets written down as one. And then if you do a good deed after it, it gets wiped away. The road to Jannah is hard or easy? But why do we always say, Wallahi, this deen is so hard for us. It's a huge trial for us. Generally, when we're reading these hadith and verses, we're thinking, Wallah, it's easy. It's so simple, but it's so hard. But the one who makes it hard is shaitan, the whispers that come to you. He's the one that's making it difficult for you, subhanAllah. Also, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah will forgive my ummah uh, for whatever crosses their mind so long. So these satanic um, uh, whispers come to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive crosses their mind so long as they do not act upon it or speak about it haram comes don't talk about it don't act upon it. you oppose him say i'm not showing off i'm going to pray and i'm going to pray even longer fix your intention between you and yourself fix your intention and allah knows what's in your heart if he says to you you've broken your wudu and you haram so many people they can then you perform wudu once twice three times four times and they keep coming and going coming and going they got this was worse I lost my wudu, I didn't do it properly. Fight these thoughts. You made wudu, that's it, don't go back. Don't go back at all, fight the thoughts. Also by opposing him, is by doing things like eating with your right hand. Because the shaitan eats with what hand? With the left. And if any of you are eating with your left, I remind you to remember, I'm not going to say fear Allah, because everyone takes it as an offense now. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and eat with your right, and you're going to get rewarded for eating and drinking. Because you're following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Also, if food falls on the floor, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us to do what? Pick it up and don't leave it for whom? For the shaitan. Pick it up and eat it. Don't leave it for shaitan. Oppose him in everything. Whatever he does, you oppose him. You do the opposite to what he wants you to do. And lastly, lastly, make sure that we all repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know how much you know, the problem when you sin and you sin and you sin and you sin, what ends up happening? Who gets a strong hold of you? The shaitan. You have to repent. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in a narration, he said, the shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and pay attention, he said, by your glory, O oh Allah, I will keep trying to misguide your slaves so long as their souls are in their body. He's going to continue to try to misguide you. A believer, as long as your soul is in your body. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came back and he told him something. And he answered him and he said, by my glory and my majesty, I will continue to forgive them so long as they ask forgiveness of me. 
You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall. But as long as you're repenting back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to continue to forgive you. So don't worry about shaitan coming to you. He's going to come. But you just make sure that you're a good Muslim. And you keep repenting. Every time you fall, repent. Young brothers are here in front of me. It's hard not to look at women. True? Don't nod your head, huh? Everyone's going to know you're perving then. It's hard. It's tough in our times. People are walking around naked. It's hard, but fight. He's going to say, listen, I made promises to you, but I lied and I deceived you. Yeah? Go out with her, you have fun. But you're sinning. Try this drink, it's going to make you happy. He's lying. Every promise that he puts in your mind, he's deceiving you. So he's going to get up and say, everything I promised, it was a lie. But everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised was true. And he says to humanity and all the people that followed him, I have nothing to do with your sins. I got nothing to do with you. All I did was whisper. But you followed. In other words, you stupid idiot. I just went, and you went done it. Huh? You dumbo. Why'd you do it for? Now you have to pay the price because I'm not going to take nothing. I'm not going to stick up for you. I'm not taking your sin. You pay the price. How do you feel when you hear this? Seriously, how do you feel? He's deceiving us. Time after time after time and we're falling and we're falling and we're falling. Why? Because our hearts are not true. And we're not purely worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm going to go back to the point I made at the start. Anyone with Facebook, I dare you now to pull out your phone. Sisters, listen up. I guarantee majority of you have got Facebook. Pull out your phone now and deactivate. If you want to purely worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I dare any of you now. Pull out your phone and deactivate. You're going to go through, you know, when uh, people come off drugs? They go cold turkey, yeah? I'm telling you, the same thing's going to happen to you. You're going to go, I, I, I need it. But in essence, you don't need it. Wallahi al-Azim. For the married brothers and married sisters, you're going to find your relationship is going to become better because you're paying attention. You're paying attention to them. You're not just going to message on Facebook and send a love heart or on, on WhatsApp. I love you with a funny face and all this sort of stuff or send the roses and all this sort of stuff. Man, get up and buy a real roses and give it to her. Yeah? Hey, my dear sisters, you don't have to always pose on your WhatsApp. Yep, the duck uh, face or whatever it is. And keep sending it to your husband. Look at him and do it. I'm pretty sure you're going to look silly, huh? So let's come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please. Facebook, get off. WhatsApp, try to get off. Okay, because we're wasting a lot of time. We spend more time on social media than reading the Quran. Then you need actually